Guys, welcome to April's episode of Billing Whitetails. In this one, we're gonna go over uh, chemicals, residual herbicide, burn down herbicide, we're gonna go over post-emerge application. I'm gonna go over the terminologies, what I use, um, and how you guys can implement this into your food plot program to help you achieve more successful food plots in this coming year. I've said it before, you'll hear me say it again, I will continue to say it. Help the deer do what deer want to do. Burn down herbicide application, what is it? This is wiping the slate clean, getting rid of all vegetation that's out there, uh, killing all the, it's usually weeds, that's what we're targeting with chemical applications is weed control. Um, on my food plots, I'm just, let's say soybeans, ahead of soybeans, because we're, you know, May is when I typically plant my soybeans. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna spray glyphosate, I'm gonna spray 2,4-D, and I'm gonna spray um, Liberty is also a very good chemical to use, uh, and I'm going to use surfactant. Now guys, these herbicides have lots of different names because different companies put out the same product under a different name. Uh, so, you know, so there's generic herbicides, there's name brand, but they are oftentimes the same product. So glyphosate, also known as Roundup. Um, that is, I use that at approximately one quart per acre, uh, and I use 2,4-D at one pint per acre. And then surfactant, there's a bunch of different kinds, but if you go to your local uh, ag retailer, that's the best place to get this stuff. Um, in my opinion, I'm at work in agriculture. Um, these places can help you on recommendations. They can help you on, you know, different products to use and timing as long as they have a good agronomy team there, which most places do. So use, reach out to those local resources. Um, your local, you know, conservation districts can help you as well in understanding the stuff and they can give you recommendations on where you can purchase these products. Um, but like I said, your local ag retailer is typically the best place to get this. Um, Online sales are okay, but I, I try to shy away from it just because there can be some miscommunications on there. It just depends. Um, there are some good companies out there online for sure. But for burn down, um, I, like I said, approximately a quart per acre of, of glyphosate, um, a pint per acre of 2,4-D, and I'm going to run surfactant. Um, and what, it's typically a few ounces, liquid ounces, uh, per tank mix, it depends on your amount that's in your tank. So if you've if you've got a tank that runs, say it's got a 20 gallon tank, and you spray it out over one acre, you're going to put one quart of Roundup in glyphosate. You're going to put one pint of 2,4-D in. T typically 2,4-D LV6. LV stands for low volatility. Uh, there is also low vol four. That is a little bit more diluted 2,4-D. That is I would run. Uh, about a pint and a quarter of that. Um, anyway, this is gonna be effective on killing most vegetation this time of year. If you really wanna get, you know, get stout with it, you can add some eight ounces of dicamba, also known as Banville, in there. That really helps with your broadleaf control. Uh, that's, that's what I run for my burn down. Now, let me throw out a word of caution on the 2,4-D. If you are planting a broadleaf crop, such as clover, soybeans, things of that nature, a general rule of thumb is waiting two days per one ounce of 2,4-D per acre. So if you put on eight ounces per acre, you need to wait a little over two weeks to go ahead and plant because that chemical needs to work its way out of the soil system to make sure that it is safe for your seed to be going into. Um, that is, that, like I said, a general rule of thumb that's used in agriculture. Some people will say, oh, that's, that's not long enough. Some people will say that's too long. You use your discretion, you talk to your crop advisor or your local um, ag retailer and ask them, but that is what I do in my experience. There is also on all these chemicals, there is a chemical label. And that label, it's on the jugs, you tear it off, it's a little pamphlet, will tell you the different um, combinations and tank mix applications that you can put on uh, in your tank using what chemicals, what chemicals are compatible with others. Guys, this is not super complicated. Don't, don't look at this as like, man, this is super complicated. I don't know what to do. 
Make sure you know how much your sprayer is spraying on an acre, the volume, whether it's 10 gallons an acre at four miles an hour or 20 gallons per acre per four miles an hour, or at whatever speed you're running. Make sure that you know that. It's very, very important to get your application right. So you're gonna put, you know, that's your burn down program. That's gonna be going on ahead of planting. I spray that as soon as I start to see green up in the spring. The easiest time to kill a weed, whether it's pre-emerge, you know, before, before your crop is growing or after your crop is growing, the best time to kill a weed is when the weed is little. The smaller the weed, the easier it is to control. When, if, you, if you're driving by and you see weeds out there, it's too late because we have a lot of herbicide tolerant or uh, resistant weeds now, particularly uh, pigweeds, water hemp, kochia, are very, very hard to control anymore if they get more than a couple of inches tall. So uh, that is burn down. Now, what is residual herbicide? Residual herbicide is a product um, also available at your local ag retailer that you spray on right before or at the time of planting. Uh, that is going to reside, that's where it gets its name, in the soil, and it's going to keep weeds at bay. That's what its job is to do. Most of them work best put on right before rain. Um, so say I go out and I plant my soybeans, and same day, next day, I'm gonna go out and spray a product. Um, you know, there are a ton of different residual herbicides. Go to your retailer, ask them what they carry. Different companies carry different products. Tell them you're planting whatever crop it is. Soybeans or corn primarily are what residuals are used for, or milo, the big grain production crops. Uh, tell them what you're planting, and they should be able to help you out with what to apply. The product that I'm using this year is a product called Prefix. Another one is Authority Supreme. That is for soybeans. It's both of these products have been very, very good for me. Um, in regards to weed control. So I'll put them on and these products will keep weeds out of my food plots for, uh, I have seen up to 60 days, but the general rule of thumb is 30 days, 30 to 45 days. Now that gives your crop that you planted, soybeans, corn, whatever it might be, the time to emerge and get a jump start on the weeds. And over time, uh, like I said, a month to two months, that residual will run out. It will run its course it will not be effective and active in the soil again. So that is typically when we have a flush of weeds come. It's important to keep an eye on this and anymore. Very, very important. Roundup does not work hardly at all. Killing pigweeds, kochia, water hemp. There are companies out there still saying that it does. I wish that was the case, but agri you know, farmers spend I mean, I, I don't even know the dollar amount to control weeds anymore and Roundup quit working, killing those a number of years ago. So we're having to use different products. That way you're seeing Enlist soybeans. You're seeing Liberty Link soybeans uh, where you can apply other products on. Make sure you know what soybeans you're getting or what corn you're getting so that you don't put the wrong herbicide on. So that's a residual herbicide that goes on at planting time. Post emerge, okay? The residual has run its course. We have gotten to where the crop is well established and out of the ground, but we got some weeds coming. What do we do? We go in and say you have Enlist soybeans. Uh, Enlist soybeans are typically, you need to make sure on your seed, whatever it is, you need to make sure you know exactly what you got because it's very important if you put Liberty uh, on a non-Liberty soybean or Enlist on a non-Enlist soybean, you'll probably kill it. And by that time, it's usually too late to come back in and replant. Um, so make sure you know what you've got to a T. Um, ask for help from your local ag retailer, um, an agronomy team, your conservation district. Uh, you guys, there are some great resources, just some good, so there's a lot of information on the internet. Make sure that you go to good agricultural sites there are a lot of people out there putting information out that is not accurate. So make sure you try to gravitate more towards agriculture because on soybeans, corn, et cetera, you are, you're really raising a, you know, a grain crop. So you know, we're raising crops that farmers in, in production are raising. We're just doing it on a smaller scale. Uh, so post-merge application. I run uh, Extend Flex soybeans. Um, they are Roundup, Dicamba, and Liberty tolerant soybeans. 
That means I can have those three products in the tank and run them out on the growing crop and it will not harm them. Uh, so make sure that you stay at the labeled rates. If you're running in list, make sure you run in list. If you're running a Roundup only soybean, you're limited to Roundup only. Um, so it's very, very important to know the trait of the crop you're planting. That's post-emerge application. For post-emerge on mine, um, I, I actually started running uh, more Liberty um, and Roundup and backing off on the uh, Extend part, which is the dicamba-based product. So uh, I, don't, I don't plant Enlist. There are a lot of Enlist out there, so I'm not going to touch on Enlist because I don't have personal experience with it. There's good soybeans out there that are Enlist. There's um, you know tons of information and tons of people that use it with a, a lot of success. So that information, I'm not going, I don't know the information, just to be completely honest. So that's, you know, on Roundup soybeans, uh, it's going to be more important that you use a, a really good residual herbicide because Roundup is not killing weeds like it used to. So um, either get a multiple mode of action. What that means is, you know, more than just Roundup. That is, say, your Extend, your Enlist, Extend Flex soybeans. Um, in corn, usually your residual herbicide, there's some really good ones out there. There's more options in corn that you may not have to come back with a post-emerge. I'm using a product called Acuron. Uh, there's, like I said, some great products out there that you very well may not have to come back again um, with weed control for post-emerge. But guys, that was like a shotgun blast of, you know, a lot of information. Feel free to, you know, rewind watch this over again um, in different sections. Uh, I, I have said this multiple times in this, in, this, in this episode, your ag retailer is gonna be your best friend in this. I've, I've talked to a ton of people and, and walked a lot of people through this and chemical is not extremely confusing, but it's very important that you make sure to get it correct um, and in an incorrect rates. So, uh, that's, that's where I started getting my information from and, and learning from in the agricultural world. And I'm just taking that information and I'm trying to pass it on to you. So um, feel free to use those resources. Make sure that you have a good chemical plan. Make sure that you go ahead and purchase your chemicals if you haven't already, because there is a shortage this year. Liberty is hard to get. Roundup is high in price. Everything has gone up dramatically in prices. Um, that's just the, the, the day we're living in. It's unfortunate. Hopefully we see these prices come down in the future, but we don't know when that's going to happen. So don't, don't put it off because a lot of these products are hard to get right now. Um, so if you find it, get what you need, you know, keep it on hand so that when the times comes, you don't want to be out there, you know, it's going to rain tomorrow. I got weeds coming. What do I do? And your supplier is sold out. You do, I don't want you guys to be in that position. So make sure you have everything that you need. Um, like I said, I threw a lot of information out there, but I really wanted to get this episode out right before plant, main planting season happens. Um, and I want you guys to be as prepared for planting season as you possibly can be. So that's this, the guys, that's this Building Whitetails episode. I want to give you as many tools to have moving forward into this year as you possibly can. Um, hit me up on Instagram if you need any further help. Uh, or, you know, hit up your ag retailer, whoever it might be that is, you know, knowledgeable in that field that is in your local area. So, guys, I appreciate it. Like and subscribe. I just, I, I, I can't thank you guys enough for all the support. And uh, we'll see you next month.